Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to another live online critique group from Xanadu Gallery and Art Business Academy. I'm Jason Horsch, owner of Xanadu Gallery, coming to you live from Scottsdale, Arizona. It's good to be here with you again uh, on a Wednesday. Before the broadcast, I was talking to our featured artist, Chris, and I mentioned that um, uh, we did our first online critique group broadcast uh, a week ago, last Wednesday. And I've got to say that as I was coming in this morning and, and thinking about the fact that that was a week ago, it kind of blew my mind because it feels like it has been at least a month. Um, time has been passing so strangely um, the last several weeks. Um, uh, we talked about it last week. We're in an unusual circumstance with many businesses closed. Um, our gallery, uh, Arizona has been in a little bit of limbo um, in that regard. Um, and uh, we just finally got an order that began last night that uh, the recommendation is to shelter in place or stay at home. Um, although I will tell you that uh, there were so many exceptions to the order in, in Arizona that it really feels more like a suggestion than an order, but uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. Hope you are all staying well and staying safe. And um, uh, I, I look forward to this opportunity to take a little break from all of that and to focus back on artwork and to be able to um, uh, get to know another artist and explore the artwork and have this conversation. So I'm very pleased um, to be here with you all this morning. And um, our featured artist today um, is Christine Crozier. Uh, Christine, let me bring you in and uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you typically go by Chris. Yes. And and so uh, we're we're excited to have you here this morning to be featuring your work. Um, Chris, begin by giving us a little bit of your background and um, life experience that brought you to to artwork. I well, I I grew up in a house full of murals. My dad was kind of a frustrated artist. He was a an electrical engineer, but he painted murals in our house. And so I, I just kind of thought everybody lived with that. And I was encouraged to paint as a kid. And um, my dad let me critique his work and he critiqued my work when I was quite little and we were not necessarily kind to each other. I mean, it was no holds barred. So um, I my first formal lessons were with a very strict and traditional Chinese teacher. And um, so I did Chinese brush painting for two years. And then when I started learning decorative art in my mid twenties, I had to learn to paint like a Western artist. And uh, that was kind of an interesting thing. And we started doing murals and faux bois, faux marbre, gilding, um, that kind of thing. And then in 1989, I decided I wanted to learn to oil paint. And I just wandered around. We lived in the Monterey Bay area. So I wandered around Carmel and looked at galleries until I found an artist whose work I really admired. Went in, asked the gallery guy if this artist taught. And Marty stood up and said, well, yeah, I do. And mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a class in two weeks. And I signed up. And so I've been doing oil painting since then. About 20 years ago, I kind of quit our mural business and I've been doing mainly oil painting fine art since then. But I still do occasion, I still do murals on occasion there. I like it, I like working that, that scale. So it's fun. And um, as we look at your the uh, background of the setting where you are, are those uh, murals that you've painted in, in the room there? I was, um, my husband and I were teaching in the Fiji Islands and we did, I plein air painted there for a month and I came back, did a painting um, of one, off one of my plein air paintings. I liked it so much I did a mural of it. And then when I was in the Carmel Art Association, they wanted to do portraits of us. And so I set up my easel and I did a plein air painting off the mural which was done off a of plein air painting. There originally. you go. <laughs> so. Excellent. And, and so um, with your um, fine art, how have you been um, showing that work? Tell us a little bit about kind of what the, the experience has been getting your work out in front of uh, potential buyers and, and what sales have been like over the years. Um, it, it sort of started by accident. Um, I never really marketed that much, which 
now in this culture is probably not a good thing. But originally I was, I got into two or three galleries because I was out painting in the area and somebody would come by and go, hey, when you're done, let me bring it in, let me see it. And all three of those galleries I ended up being in. So sales have been, you know, okay. It's supplemented with, with decorative art, but um, yeah, I just kind of did it by accident, which is probably not a great thing because I didn't have to really learn to market. Well, um, uh, there, there's always uh, time to learn and expand and, um, oh, and yeah. certainly, um, we, we all have those opportunities in the work. So um, excellent, Chris. It's, it's, uh, and again, I really appreciate your willingness to be here in the critique group. Um, and as we begin the critique process, uh, many of you have already spent some time on our website looking over the, the pieces that uh, Chris submitted. Um, and I thought what we would do this week, um, last week we went kind of a little bit free range and, and just talked around about a, a number of different areas. What I'd like to do this time is kind of take a look at the work from several different aspects. I wanna look at, and we did some of this last week, I just thought we'd take a little bit more formal approach to it. Um, so I'd like to look at the consistency of the work, uh, quality, and by that I mean both quality of the work itself in terms of technique and style, but also the quality of the presentation and format, um, the style of the work, uh, marketability, pricing, and um, and then we're going to get some words of encouragement. Um, and, and as many of you submitted um, using the form, you'll kind of get a sense of, of where the conversation is going. But let's begin then by looking at the work itself. Um, and uh, we'll just kind of move through these five images and you can of course see, hopefully, uh, we're, we're still getting the hang of the format here. So I don't know if, if our video is, is covering up the title, medium, um, price information there, um, but you can see that uh, Chris is working in a variety of different um, formats and sizes, 16, uh, that first one was 1620, this is a 2424, uh, 1824, 2024, and then we have a 12 by 12. And and Chris, tell us, um, you, you know, in, ter in terms of format and style and subject matter, would these five pieces be pretty typical of your work? Is this a, a fairly representative grouping of, of the overall body of work that you're creating? Yeah, I, I think so. I have to say the Popcorn Sky, the last one, the, the plein air study I did was 12 by 12. I mislabeled it. It's actually 40 by 40. Oh, so that's, it's a, much that's a pretty significant difference. Yes. So, I, I do like to work large. Um, okay, good. Because that was going to actually be one of the points that came up. So that's excellent to know. Um, so let's, let's begin then. Oops. Um, let's begin um, with a conversation about the consistency of the work. Um, and from last week's session, many of you know that I kind of have um, some specific areas that I look at when I'm considering consistency, the subject matter, the style of the work, the thematic elements, presentation, medium, um, palette that's, that's being worked. Um, and, and rather than, than me jumping in and, and just giving you my opinions about the consistency, I would love to get some, some input from um, those of you who are joining us today in terms of what you think of the consistency of the work. And so uh, maybe I'll go first to our video panel and any of those of you who are here in the session, if you wanna just throw a hand up and let me know um, if you'd like to hop in with some comments on the consistency. And likewise, any of you who are here as um, just participants, if you wanna put your hand up, um, I would bring you in um, to, to have a conversation about consistency as well. Thoughts on consistency. And it looks like I've got Sue. Let me get uh, Sue in. Good morning, Sue. Do I have you? You do, uh-huh. I think I've got you. Good morning. Um, give us some thoughts on the consistency of Chris's work. Um, I think it's all very good, um, but I think her strongest works are towards the end. Um, the, um, the first two, um, the, the, say the first one. The first one, I think if you cover half of the painting, um, you have the side with all the shadows in it. I think if you cover the other half with your hand, um, the side with all of the different values, 
um, is, is a lot stronger than the other side. Um, the second painting, um, uh, the swimming hole, I can't remember this uh -huh. one. Summer magic. Summer magic, thanks. Um, that one, I think the color is wonderful in that. Um, what The only thing that distracts me is the circle um, of light. It's, it's unclear what it is and it's, it's, it's too defined. Um, so I, I think- And it's interesting um, if I can just hop in, Sue, there were several um, comments uh, you, you submitted kind of along that same line on this piece. Um, you know, what is the circle, what's going on? And I, it was interesting to me as I was looking through and I, this one stopped me too. And there was that moment of, oh, hey, what's going on up there? And, and then it, it was just a millisecond that I said, oh, that, that's a, um, a flotation device, right? A, in a, a tube. And I actually found it kind of playful and fun. And it, to me, it added another dimension to the narrative um, that's going on here. So, so I would say for me, from a narrative standpoint, I thought it was very interesting. And maybe it's a little bit different question from a composition standpoint. Um, yeah, I, I, the flotation, I, again, I love the colors in that, um, the lights, the darks, um, the vibrancy of the color, um, but I, I still find it distracting. Um, it, it just, it's, I'm drawn to that. The rest of them, I think, are much stronger. Um, and Sue, do you feel like um, if you were to encounter this, all of these five pieces together, um, would there be any confusion in your mind about whether they had been done by one artist? Do you see anything that stands out where you'd say, no, these just, you know, there's something here that doesn't fit with the other pieces? Um, I would say the only one if, um, would be the one um, with the, the kids swimming. Um, it, 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 I think it works, but um, the others are all landscapes without people. Um, that one is a different type. It's, um, as you say, more of the hips, more, <clears throat> excuse me, more of a narrative. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can get uh, Karen in and just um, see if you have some additional perspective. Good morning, Karen. Do I have you? Um, yep, I've got you loud and good. clear. Good, super. Um, I'd, I find uh, that uh, the, st uh, the style is very consistent. I love the brushwork that brings it like there's no doubt in my mind um, who painted it um, because it's very much the same. Uh, I love the loose brushwork. It's uh, and it's very personal. So, yeah, I think it's extremely consistent. Yeah. And remember, um, at least from a, uh, you know, from my perspective as a gallery owner and thinking about how I might show the work together um, and, and Sue and Karen, I, I appreciate both of your, your comments. Um, I, I do agree with, with Sue that there is a little bit different feel in the, the piece with the kids, but it's not so different. And especially when I think about the other elements that, that tie it together, the, the brushwork, um, the kind of uh, interplay between the, the lighter and darker values. Um, I, I don't see that I would have any issue um, um, showing this right next to one of the other pieces um, and, and feel like there would be a jarring transition. Now, um, it, from the perspective of putting together, say, a portfolio, a, a broader range of work, I might like to see several different pieces that have um, um, either figures or um, you know, something a little bit outside of just nature in them, and I might group those together. But um, overall, I, I agree. I, I, I don't see any, you know, major inconsistency um, in, in, in those terms here. Um, any other comments on consistency? And then um, I'd like to talk a little bit about quality. And goodness, somehow I got in here without bringing in Chris, your images of the frame pieces. So um, let, 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 let's skip quality for just a second while I pull those over. Let's talk about Chris's style. Um, and again, if I could bring in some panelists to talk about what you feel are the, the strengths um, of, of the style and um, any, any input or suggestions that you have stylistically, I'd love to bring you in. Uh, Marianne, um, let me see if I can get you in. Good morning, Marianne. Oh, hold on. Do I have you? I think I've got Hi, you. Good morning. How are you? Great, how's it going? Great, it's doing good. We're doing great here. Excellent, talk a little bit about your reaction to Chris's style and the work itself. 
So first of all, my, my first reaction was her quality of light is just beautiful. I am a huge fan of light in my own work. It's probably what draws me into pretty much every piece I ever look at. And I thought your handling of the light in all of these pieces was just fabulous. Um, in the one, I know it's a little controversial right now in this, but the, the summertime one that she has, the summer magic, um, I absolutely, I think that's probably my favorite piece out of um, the ones that you've shown. And uh, I personally loved um, all of the, the, everything that it brought me, exactly the summer magic. I knew exactly what it was. Um, it took me back to maybe a childhood memory type thing. It seemed like something I would have done when I was little myself. And the style, um, this sort of impressionistic realism, um, it gives you that feeling of memory as opposed to um, telling you everything. And I think that's something that I love is that it forces you to interact with it. It forces you to um, come up with your own ideas, your own story, your own feelings about it. And I can't say enough. I think you are a master of what you've done. I'm really impressed. I wouldn't have anything to say negative about your style. Wow, thank you. You're yeah. very welcome. I, I really do. I mean, listening to your biography, because I didn't know anything about you. And um, I can see that you've been doing this, you know, you've been an artist for a long time. And I think it comes through in your composition, in your, like I said, your light play and your movement of the, the paint. I, I really was impressed. Thank you. And Chris, talk a little bit about um, subject matter selection. How do you go about um, gathering reference material? Um, are you um, painting plein air or are you spending most of your time in the studio? What, what, what's that process, your creative process like? I have gone from being mostly a plein air painter, pretty much always in the field, to now I'm doing small studies in the field and sketches and and then I come back to my studio and work on larger pieces. Um, I and I I have to say I've always wanted the paintings to sort of evoke an emotion or a memory in people. I I want it, I want to feel like the place more than I want it to look like the place. Yeah. And, so. and I, I, um, and, and I know we have uh, a number, a good number of, um, uh, landscape, uh, painters and, and photographers, uh, who are in our audience. Um, and, and it's a conversation I frequently have with artists in the gallery. Um, when, when we're looking at landscape, I discourage the artists from being too specific in their titles. Um, I, I like your titles, Chris, that um, are, are kind of in that vein of evoking a, a broad um, resonance in, in terms of memories and those kind of things. So, so I wouldn't want someone to title a piece like the one we're looking at right now as, um, you know, um, uh, Clear Creek, Idaho, or, you know, the because what will happen is people will come into the gallery and they'll say, oh my goodness, I think I've been here. Is th This must be oh. in, um, you know, in Kentucky where I grew up. And I know very well that the artist is from California and that this is probably, um, you know, a piece that was created locally. But I'm not going to have that kind of conversation with a client where I'm trying to let them know, sorry, you're wrong, um, you, you know, and those aren't Aspen, they're Birch and, or anything like that. Um, because really, art is a very much a conversation between the artist who's creating the piece and the viewer and eventually the, the buyer of that piece where um, you're, you are communicating um, typically on a more emotional um, you know, more nostalgic level. And if you get too caught up in the details, sometimes you can wreck that. Um, and, and so I do like to, and, and I would encourage those of you who are creating landscape work to kind of think, you know, more broadly in thematic terms, um, rather than getting too specific or having it be too specifically about the place. Now, there are exceptions to that, obviously. Um, you know, if you're painting the Grand Canyon, 
um, it is the Grand Canyon and people will have responded because there are a lot of people who have been there or, you know, some other iconic subject matter like that. Um, you know, and sometimes people are traveling to a region and it makes sense for them to acquire artwork that is, is specific to that region or landmarks or that kind of thing. But generally speaking, when it comes to landscape work, you, you, you do really want to um, appeal to the broadest audience possible and have it be more about that emotion and that experience. Um, I've got some images now, and let me see if I can get these up here just from the site, um, showing the, the presentation um, of the work. Uh, and Chris, so this is, we're, we're seeing now the, the framing of one of the pieces that we've seen in the review. Would this be fairly typical of the, the frame and presentation that you're creating with the work? Uh, all of my studio pieces right now, I'm framing this way in these floater frames. Uh, the only things I frame in a different frame are if I have the studies up and they're usually on, on a board and it's difficult to frame that way. So I'll put them in a different frame. But yeah, and so it, 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 and what, um, what, what's kind of drawn you to this presentation, which I would say um, uh, maybe almost makes the presentation a little bit more transitional. It's not a um, gilt gold frame or a traditional plein air kind of frame. It is um, something between traditional and contemporary. What, what's moved you in that direction? I like the simplicity of them and I, and I like that it's not, you know, too many times people, I've heard people come into galleries and go, oh yeah, the plein air gold frames. And I, I just didn't want to get sort of locked into something, but I, I like the contemporary look of these. I like the simplicity of them. And do you have a sense that um, most of your buyers are um, kind of keeping them in this presentation or do you hear from time to time about clients doing reframes and that kind of thing? Oh, uh, once in a while, once in a while they'll reframe, but for the most part, I think people are keeping them in these frames. Keeping them as they are. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'd love to get comments on um, presentation, what you think, uh, you know, of course, we only have a couple of quick images um, and I've got uh, the front of a piece in the back. And, and why do I care about this? Um, uh, you, you know, especially a piece like this, um, you, you know, we want to think, well, you know, the artwork is what is important. The presentation um, is, is secondary. But my experience with uh, art buyers is that the presentation is not secondary. It is um, integral to the experience that they're going to have with the artwork. And, and you know, my clients are going to see the, the piece from the front, but they're also going to see this, the sides and the back of the work. Um, and I think, Chris, you've done a great job of uh, creating a, a professional presentation of the work that feels clean and um, uh, 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 well put together and, and that there's a lot of attention to detail. And I'm seeing in the, the chat, love the floater frames, nice clean look, that's from Tori. Um, uh, let me, I, I've got to go ahead and lower hands here because I can't tell which ones were already up and which are down. But if you want to hop in with a co comment about uh, presentation, uh, Karen, let me bring, oh, hold on, I think I've, Oh, no, nope. hands are going down and up. So hold on, uh, Karen, I think I've got you here again. Karen, comments on okay. presentation. Uh, yes, uh, I totally agree with the simplicity and uh, the contemporary look. Uh, what I find um, not so good is that they're, um, I don't know, I prefer black in when I put uh, uh, something in a floater frame like that. Um, it gives an edge to it. I, I find that there's nothing in the painting that uh, relates to that particular brown color. So yeah, that's the only thing that I have against it. Okay, good. Um, Dan, I think I've got you and uh, it's funny, they kind of pop around. Uh, good morning, Dan, can I hear you here? Yes, sir, okay, there, gotcha. can you hear me? Yep, got you loud and clear. Thank you, Thank you. should I give you, my name's Dan Nelson, I'm an artist, you can, Google me, find me. Um, and where are you uh, located, Dan? I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, excellent. Yeah. Um, question uh, about presentation in general. Probably 12 years ago, I abandoned framing altogether and do nearly 100%, <laughs> nearly 100% gallery wrap. And I would love your input, your your thoughts on that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, a great question. And I will tell you, um, it, it depends. Um, certainly in, in my gallery, my gallery leans a little bit more contemporary, although again, I would define this as transitional. I have everything from more representational and impressionistic landscapes to um, purely abstract work. And, and so in, in, in that kind of context, um, certainly uh, the, the floater, or excuse me, the uh, gallery wrap um, presentation um, has become more and more widely uh, accepted by clients, um, even preferred by some clients. I, I do still, though, see, um, and it, you know, kind of depending on the the region that you're in and the um, uh, kind of sensibility of what's showing in in the different galleries in that region, that there still are some areas that prefer to have a more traditional presentation in terms of framing. So that's going to depend a little bit on architecture and, and all those kinds of things. Um, you know, there still seems to be somewhat of a clean divide between um, artists who are um, uh, creating work that is more representational, that though there would be a, a little bit more of a tendency to show that work in frames. And then the more contemporary you go, um, you know, the more likely you are to show it in that, that other format. Having said that, that's talking broadly and, and talking about trends. I'm showing, uh, my father is a painter, many of you know, um, a landscape painter, um, and he's showing his uh, gallery wrapped unframed and has done so for you know, a good 30, 35 years now and does very well with that format. So ultimately, when it comes to that kind of question of how, how you as an artist want to present your work, um, I, I would make that decision from a, a um, vision standpoint. What aesthetic am I aspiring to with my work? Um, you know, and then you can find the right venues to, to show that work um, where that, that work would fit in. Um, that, I, so that, that was a long way, Dan, of saying, I think it's perfectly fine to show your work without frames and that you can definitely find an audience for that work. Can right. I comment on that? Sure, you bet. <laughs> Um, I, I gallery, I, I usually paint gallery wrap canvases and I do paint the sides because I want, I don't want that to show. Um, I just, and I do like that, but I think sometimes with the gallery wrap, it almost, it, it has to be part of the presentation. It has to be intentional. And for me, just personally, I like just a little, it's a little more finished. Like with your father, he creates a little rim of white and then that's around the edge, but it's very, very intentional. I also have uh, submitted to some shows that don't accept gallery wrap. So yeah. there's that too. But I, I just like it. It's a little cleaner, a little more finished for my part. Yeah, so it's uh, it, it's a debate that we probably can't answer in yeah. full here this morning. Um, and but but um, certainly you're seeing wider and wider, um, uh, you, you know, acceptance of and even some preference for um, the, the the gallery wrap presentation. So again, I would say either way that you feel is best for your work, you're going to be okay going in that direction. You will be able to find audience and and galleries and and shows that would be able to um, show and sell that work. Um, let, let's also then talk about, let me get us there, talk about style, marketability. I don't think there's a lot to talk about. Um, and, and you've already have a proof of concept of the saleability of your work, Chris, because you're already selling it. You've already developed an, an audience there. Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit last week about some artists having perhaps a, um, uh, maybe a little bit more of a challenge. Um, uh, in terms of finding a broad audience for their work because of the subject matter or the style. Um, certainly with landscape work, uh, that, that's not going to be as big an issue. That is a very broad marketplace. There's a, there are a lot of buyers out there. You have the opposite challenge in that um, the, the marketplace is more competitive. There are more, not only more buyers, but also more artists out there who are, are working in that vein. Um, and so has that been a little bit of a challenge, Chris, kind of figuring out how do you make your work stand out among a field of a lot of other um, uh, landscape artists? Or how much do you think about that even? I, I do think about it because starting out as a plein air painter, I would approach galleries and they would go, great, I love your work, but I only want local scenes. 
And I thought, I, I have to do something that doesn't limit me to that. So that was originally why I started putting more figures. I thought, let it be about the people in the landscape. Um, I don't know. I think they're as difficult to sell. <laughs> Yeah. Landscapes. Nobody feels like they have an easy time of it, no, right? There's no easy, there's no easy answer, but, um, but I do, uh, I have tried now lately and it, it's not as a marketability thing. It's just because this is what I want to be doing is to really focus more on the abstract elements of the painting. And I found that doing less representational and slightly more abstract, it makes it a, a bit more universal. Yeah, interesting. And um, uh, let, let, let me go then to some of the uh, comments that were submitted ahead of time. And I'll just take a little bit of uh, your reaction and, and thoughts on some of these. So uh, Claude says many pieces would be improved by a greater contrast in shading. And a couple of the paintings have areas that appear to be incomplete, white areas at the top, and it may as well be spring, the water at the top of shadow boulders. And the popcorn clouds would benefit from appropriate shading. Uh, the donut sun in Suburb Magic is a distraction and doesn't fit. So there we hear a little bit of an echo of that. Uh, I, I think we found, Chris, our most controversial piece um, in yeah. the grouping that you uh, <laughs> sent in. Uh, which is good. I, I think that, um, you, you know, having a piece that draws some conversation and, and um, strong feelings one way or the other can, can draw attention to it and, and um, ultimately you only have to find one buyer. So it doesn't matter how many people have, uh, you, you know, strong feelings in the other direction. Um, thoughts about though, um, you know, kind of contrasts in values and, and light and dark, um, how much, you, you know, how much does that come into play as you're thinking about your compositions? A lot, I do thumbnail sketches in just light and dark. Uh, if I can't paint somewhere and I can only make photos, I do, I do a thumbnail sketch of what I think I'd want the painting to do, but I always do a thumbnail sketch. So I, I think I pay a lot of attention to it. <laughs> yeah. That may not show to, in my work, but, but I do try and pay a lot of attention to that. Yeah, excellent. Um, Cree says, uh, there's great consistency in the paintings. Her sensitivity draws me into each painting as though I might be a member of the family and had the opportunity to swim, freeze in the snow and climb to see views that most people yearn to experience. Uh, her clouds hover, but do not take away from the journey. Her solid construction, uh, constructions build a comfort in my heart with a yearning to be where she has traveled. Uh, and that's the beauty of your work, right? Is that we have the opportunity to, to take those trips with you. Um, and I, I too love that feeling. Um, and I always feel kind of privileged to spend a lot of time around artists because I feel like you all see the world in a, a slightly different way than the rest of us do. Um, you, you know, we can maybe have that uh, emotional experience where we're at a beautiful vista and appreciate the scene. Um, but I often don't know, okay, what is it that's making this such a striking scene? And as I look at your work, Chris, I see that um, you're paying attention to that and, and really trying to find what's interesting in that scene. Uh, this from Gina uh, from California. Uh, don't forget the backgrounds. They should be as interesting as the foreground. Really like some of the brushwork, but some of it's too repetitive. Uh, like the forest in the background, value should be as important as composition. Subtle and atmospheric parts don't need to be boring. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to take a photo of the piece when you think you're finished. Look at it with fresh eyes, walk away and come back. Um, even better is to take a pick and flip it. Um, that could be painful, but helpful. Yeah, t talk about that a little bit, Chris. How do you know when a piece is finished and um, how often are you going back to a piece um, after you've, you've worked it and, and feel like maybe uh, it needs, needs something else or something added to it? I, I do that much more often than I used to. <laughs> I used to, when doing plein air, I'd be like, okay, I'm done, that's it. I don't know what else to do. But now I do tend to go back. I, I look at them for a long time. I do photograph them. Um, especially if I'm not sure about something. I'll photograph it, flip the photo. Um, sometimes a, a friend taught me to take tracing paper and put it over the photo and outline the dark areas, outline the light areas and color them in and just do it as a pure abstract and make sure it's kind of a check, way to check it. So I, I actually do that. Um, 
but yeah, I, and I, I do go back now more often, but often I'll, I'll just go, you know what, this painting, I've had it for eight years. It's not working. Yeah. Let's just reuse the canvas or paint over it or do something different, you know? Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, good. Um, let's, any other, oh, I, the, the one other question I wanted to ask you was how you arrived at, we saw your um, price points for these pieces. Talk about the evolution of the, the pricing process for your work and um, how you come about determining the value for any individual piece. When I started out, uh, gallery owners really helped me set the prices. I mean, I had no clue and that started it and then I really hadn't you know they'd gone up a little bit over the years but until I took the art business academy thank you very much Jason <laughs> um and you did the we did the spreadsheet with the pricing where you compare it to other galleries and I realized I hadn't raised my prices in 10 years I'd had kind of an interesting 10 years but still I was still as many business. of us had yes and I hadn't raised my prices in 10 years and I was decidedly on the low end of comparable galleries, comparable work. And um, I remember our little interchange email exchange was, well, what do you think you should do about that? And I said, well, I think I should start raising my prices. And you said, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. So um, really between starting out and, and taking the Art Business Academy workshop, um, that that was the that was the time that I really started looking at pricing again, and, and so I have been doing that. Yeah, excellent, and it, it's going to be an interesting several months, maybe a little longer now, as as um, we 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 see how the art market responds to the current situation and sales and all those kinds of things. But um, you know, as things restabilize, the markets kind of come back into line. Um, it is. Um, uh, certainly uh, provident for every artist to be constantly reviewing and thinking about pricing. At least once a year, you should be looking at your sales, looking at your production, um, you, you know, kind of looking at historic trends in your work and, and making a decision. Is it time to, to bump values up a little bit? What's going on in the marketplace? Should I consider having um, having that price increase. And I know that's, um, uh, can be a little bit scary at times. Oh, you know, I don't want to scare away buyers and that kind of thing. But um, um, certainly if you're not careful, um, as you mentioned, Chris, t a lot of time can go by and you can be stuck at a, at a value and, and not seeing that increase, um, which is yeah. a negative for you. It's a negative for your collectors um, who already have your work. Um, they would hope to be seeing those, those values increase. Um, and it hasn't well. hurt raising them. I was surprised, you know, you, like you said, it's scary. And then uh, this summer I sold uh, quite a large painting to a buyer uh, through my gallery. And then I had a show of a collection of work that I had done and the sales at the, at the show were very slow, which sometimes happens. And two months later, I got a call from somebody and they said, they want to buy your four biggest paintings. Wow. I went, awesome. well, okay. We can handle that. <laughs> we can <do> that. <laughs> so yeah. actually the pricing thing, it, it hasn't really changed too much of anything. It hasn't, you know, slowed my sales. Yeah. There's been other factors now, but it hasn't been that I raised my prices. Good. So good. Excellent. Well, good. Well, um, I, I think uh, I didn't even get to a scratch the surface of the um, all of you that's that submitted comments, but I'd love um, kind of as we're, we're uh, coming to the end of our time, I'd love to invite anybody who wants to pop in and ask any last questions of, of myself or Chris, uh, make any last comments. Um, let me go ahead again and, and lower hands. Um, but if you do wanna hop in with a comment or a question, now is a great time to do that. Any of those of you who are in the video panel, if you want to unmute and hop in with a comment or a question, I welcome you to do that as well. Uh, let's see, it looks like I've got uh, Elizabeth, if I can. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was just curious, uh, you'd mentioned uh, supplementing your fine art um, with decorative arts. And so I, I was wondering what, what, was, what are her decorative arts? What are you speaking of? Uh, decorative art is mural work. Uh, I've done hand-painted wallpapers. I've done oh. painted furniture. Um, more um, 
functional, you know, sort of not, not like you would hang on a wall in a frame, but it's, it's a little more functional art. So it was an interesting choice um, deciding to have my day job be in the arts and then my fine art as sort of a supplement because when it, when the economy tanks, boy, your day job is not very supportive, Yeah, <laughs> but it's worked out great. I've, de depending on what I'm doing, I might be marbleizing a fireplace or painting a marble floor or doing a mural in a hospital. Um, I'm still painting every day. So oh, that's wonderful. Great. Very, awesome. very inspiring to hear that. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments, questions as we close out our session? And Jason? I'll, yeah, good morning. Hi, um, I just wanna say that, it, um, Chris, I love your work. And um, Monet is one of my favorite painters and your work reminds me of Monet's style. It's very, very soft, dreamy, and it just has a really nice feel to it. And it makes me feel good to look at it. And, Art that makes you feel good, I think, is is successful, is art. And um, that's what I try to do with my paintings. But uh, anyway, I, I like that style. It's hard for me to do that. And I think that's why I admire it so much, because I, I do photorealistic stuff. I, I've tried to do that Monet style, and it just never works for me. So I, I really admire that you're able to capture that and do that very dreamy, soft kind of stuff, because it it is, it does draw you in and it does take you to a, a dreamlike state. It's, it's great. Thank you so much. That's, that's great. To and hear. and uh, Chris, let me ask you this, um, kind of in that same vein, how different, um, you know, when you're doing the more decorative work um, and, and the murals, is, is that in a significantly different style? Is it a lot more realism and representational? And, um, and then is the, the uh, landscape work looser and kind of a release from that? Or, or, or are they pretty close? It, yes, it is. Um, part of it is that when you're doing a mural, you're, doing, you're working by committee or what somebody else wants. So it's much more realistic. And I, the room I'm sitting in, this is my office. Uh, these are murals that I have painted in the background. So it's often historical um, styles. This is a kind of an 18th century chinoiserie style murals I've done in this room. So yes, they are much more uh, realism. So often it's just like putting aside the restraints of someone else's opinion about what you should be doing. When I do my own painting, it's like, I don't care if anybody likes this or not, I'm just doing this for me. <laughs> so yeah, awesome. so there is definitely a difference, but there's, well, there's a carryover too. I, I try and make a lot of my murals. The one that my portrait is behind, the one of the Fiji islands, I wanted that to look like an oil painting, even though it was a eight foot by eight foot mural. So. Excellent. It uh, looks like I've got just a couple of others. Um, PJ, let's see if I can get uh, PJ in. Did you have a comment or a question? And... Oh, do I have you now, PJ? Okay, now. There we go, I think I've got you. I just wanted to say thanks for Chris for putting herself out there. This is so helpful and thank you for putting this on. This is just great and so helpful. Yes, thank you. And I, I am, am very appreciative. I did have a number of you after last week's session um, saying, hey, how do I get into the hot seat? I'd love to be featured, <laughs> um, which surprises me. I mean, uh, I personally would be a little nervous about it, but I, I appreciate your willingness to. And, and just know that um, uh, the, the way it's working right now is that we're randomly selecting uh, subscribers to Red Dot Blog um, to submit work for consideration for these sessions. And so if you're subscribed to red.blog, um, you've got a shot at, at uh, being in on this and joining us. But, but yes, Chris, I, I thank you as well for being willing to uh, submit the work and have this conversation about your art. Well, thank you. And I wanna thank everybody who commented. I really, really appreciate it. And at hard as it may be, the comments that are not necessarily positive are the ones that you really learn from. So, yes. Yeah. And I hope that, that um, we'll all take it that way that, um, you know, obviously everyone's going to have their own perspective. And I think everyone is also going to look at your work, Chris, and say, 
well, if I were painting that, this yeah. is how I would do it. <laughs> and, and, and um, you know, that's a different thing than if you're creating it. And, and so um, my hope is that through these conversations, we're just all getting a little bit of a broadened perspective and that you can take what, what sparks your imagination and use that. And whatever does it, you can say, well, go ahead, paint it, do it your way. And, um, and, and we'll all grow from it that way as well. Uh, again, thank you, Chris. And thanks to everyone who's joined us for this session. Um, as of now, the plan is that we'll be back here uh, next Wednesday for another um, online critique group. Um, I say back here, but it is possible that you'll be seeing me from my home computer next week if things continue to go um, the way that they have been going. But either way, the plan is to be back here uh, next week for another uh, critique session. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you soon.